It's new MacBook day. And yes, I was able to pick up one of these brand new 15 inch MacBook Airs this morning. So I want to, well, unbox it, of course. I want to kind of get my first impressions. I want to do a full migration from Time Machine to see what that process looks like. I want to test out the speakers, run some benchmarks, and of course, just talk about the general specs and maybe who this is for. So without delay, let's get started. Now, first things first, this is the base model 15 inch MacBook Air. It has eight gigabytes of unified memory and a 256 gigabyte SSD. This does come with an M2 chip with an eight core CPU and a 10 core GPU. This is a slight upgrade from the base model 13 inch version of this laptop because that version comes standard with a eight core GPU. And this time I decided to go ahead and check out the midnight version of the M2 MacBook Air. I did not have a midnight version for the previous one. So this will be a first for me to get started. All we gotta do is remove these cardboard paper tabby things at the bottom. And we should be able to just drop this guy right out of there. There we go. All right. Wow, first impression just picking it up. It definitely feels larger than the 13 inch model, which, you know, obviously, right? But I'm curious how it compares to the 14 inch MacBook Pro as well. And I'll definitely be making videos comparing against the 13 inch MacBook Air and the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And I don't have a 16 inch MacBook Pro right now, but you know, maybe. And inside the box, the first thing we have is that color matched MagSafe cable. If you remember the first version of MagSafe 3 for the MacBooks that came out a couple years ago, did not come with color matching cables. They were all just silver, even if you got a space gray laptop. So it's nice that Apple includes color matched cables now that match the laptop. We have a power adapter under here, and this is going to be the, let's see, this is the dual port 30 watt power adapter. And I actually like these for travel. I think they're really nice because you can use for plugging in your iPhone and plugging in your Apple Watch, or you can use the dual MagSafe charger that Apple sells for iPhone and Apple Watch, and then also plug it in an iPad or something else. And then of course we have the general documentation that we always have with Apple devices, including some stickers in there probably. And yep, hey, they're color matched kind of blue midnight as well. That's kind of cool. Let's get all the crap out of the way and we can open up this new MacBook Air. Flip it over. Okay, this is the first time I think I'm seeing the midnight color in person and right out of the gate, it does impress. Wow, God, I cannot believe I did not get one of these last time. It really does. Even in my weird lighting that I have in this room, it does look stunning. Hopefully you can see this on camera, but it is a beautiful dark blue color. Open that up and that, wow, God, that just feels like the Pro laptops. It looks like the Pro laptops. It looks very similar to the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which I don't have anymore, but I did have for quite some time. Even from this angle, like the color just looks really good. And it does look like fingerprinting is still going to be an issue. I know a lot of people had issues with that with the previous version. And according to those videos, they don't usually wipe off that easy either, but you know what? That's just something you have to live with if you want this color. So if we look over on the right-hand side, you do see that we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and nothing else. There's no SD card slot or Thunderbolt ports on this side like there are on the MacBook Pro. And on the left side, we do have that MagSafe three port connection for charging the laptop, but you also get two Thunderbolt three ports over here as well. So on the inside, we have the updated keyboard layout that we got a couple of years ago, and it's a full-size keyboard, of course. You get the full-size function row key, you touch ID up here, and it's a Magic Keyboard. I love the Magic Keyboard. I love how it's the same going from MacBook to MacBook or MacBook to desktop Magic Keyboard or even to the iPad Magic Keyboard. I love having- To use a, English as the main language, press the return key. I love having a consistent keyboard feeling between devices, so that's really nice. Before I set this up, I do just wanna look at this design again. So over here, because it's larger, over here normally you would have a speaker grill of some sort. The 14 and the 16 inch version has speaker grills on the sides, but like the M2 13 inch MacBook Air, the speakers are inside and they fire, I don't know, through back there or something. This does have a new six speaker system inside and I'm curious to see how that sounds. See if it's an upgrade from the 13 inch version but I'm sure because there are no speaker grills, no front firing speakers, it's not going to be as loud or as clear as the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. And just holding this, you can really feel the thinness of this MacBook Air. It definitely earned its name. It is a bit heavier than I kind of thought it would be based on what some of the other people online have said, but it's not as heavy as the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now on the inside, this is where the magic happens, right? 
This has been upgraded from a 13.6 inch display all the way to a 15.3 inch display. That's gonna give you more real estate for your applications. You're not gonna get the same exact resolution as you do on the MacBook Pros, but you're definitely going to get more real estate than you had on the 13 inch. They didn't just blow up the size of the pixels, they actually added a little bit more real estate. So let's get started with the setup process, starting with selecting your country. And we'll select our country and accessibility, not now, select Wi-Fi network. We'll continue and now we're at the Migration Assistant and I am actually going to restore this MacBook from a time machine backup of my 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now there are other ways that you can migrate your data from one Mac to another. This time we're gonna go ahead and use a time machine disk. So I'm just going to plug that in on the side there. I'm gonna choose from Mac, time machine backup or startup disk. It's going to scan and find this time machine backup which is right there. It's probably gonna ask me to enter password because it is password protected. So we're going to select this drive and we're going to hit continue. And now what it's going to do is it's going to look at the files on this drive. I'm gonna say I wanna restore from today, which was, I guess, 10.40 a.m. Pacific time. Go ahead and hit continue. And it's going to scan this drive and look for the user ID and other information on this drive to determine what I'm going to pull over to this Mac. It says my system needs to be updated, so crap, I need to update to 13.4. So we'll update real quick. And now we wait. So. While that's happening in the background, let me tell you about a couple other specs on this laptop. The display again is a 15.6 inch LED display. This is a bigger display than the 13 inch, obviously to give you more real estate, there are more pixels. It gets up to 500 nits of brightness, just like most of the other Macs, and it has P3 wide color support, and it supports True Tone to change the white balance automatically to support whatever lighting condition you're in. One very curious thing about the 15 inch MacBook Air is that the battery life is the same as a 13 inch. Apple's promising up to 15 hours of battery life on this version, just like the 13 inch. And you would have thought with a bigger case and a bigger battery, you would have got maybe a couple more hours of battery life, but something in here is sacrificing. Maybe the larger screen is pulling more power than you would expect, or something else is going on inside. Maybe there's a little extra performance because of the size of the chassis, I don't know. But unfortunately, the battery life is 15 hours of wireless web browsing, which, I mean, really, can you complain about 15 hours of wireless web browsing battery life? No, that is more than a full day's regular work. Up at the top, we do have that infamous notch, just like the previous MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros, and of course, iPhones up until the iPhone 14 Pro. And inside there is a 1080p camera, and for the love of Pete, can we please get Face ID on the Mac? That is the only thing missing that I really, really want on a Mac. Well, I mean, besides more base RAM and storage. And now we should be able to continue on with our restore from Time Machine. Again, we'll select the same one from earlier today, hit continue, and it's going to scan this drive. And during the update, I did notice how large the trackpad was, and it is a bit shocking coming from the 13 inch MacBook Air and the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Again, to this size trackpad, it is just, enormous, like I don't have large hands, but it's still quite a large trackpad. Here you go. It is about almost six inches wide and almost four inches tall. So that's quite a large trackpad for all of your swiping and gestures. So here's a list of items I can transfer from my time machine backup to this MacBook. I can transfer applications, I can transfer user data, other files and network systems. I want the applications, of course, I don't need that user. I do want my user account, but you can see it's 226 gigabytes on its own. So I can't transfer everything to it because the base model is only 256 gigabytes. So we need to deselect some items in my user folder. Let's see, I don't need my downloads moved. I don't need parallels moved. I don't need my pictures because I use iCloud photos and temp, I don't need that either. So that should be good enough to get that down to a reasonable amount of transfer. So we're gonna transfer 80.72 gigabytes and have about 136 gigabytes left over when we're done. We'll hit continue. We'll set a password for my user account, agree. And now the migration is taking place, which will take a few minutes. So the migration completed in about 10 minutes or less to transfer 80 gigabytes using this USB 4 drive. Inside here is a little NVMe drive. You can get that in different sizes, and this is an external USB 4 case. So I'll leave a link below if you're interested in that. Now we can unplug this, we don't need that. All right, so now we have migrated all of my data that I want from my 14 inch MacBook Pro to this new 15 inch MacBook Air. We'll go ahead and sign in with iCloud. As my iCloud is setting up on here, who is this computer really for? Well, it's for 
the regular person, the everyday person who just needs a Mac to get their things done. Now, I do have a video on which model you should get, and this is the base model, and my recommendation for a lot of people is not to get the base model, just because if you plan on having this for five or six or seven years, or you're using it for casual use now, and you plan to increase your workload somewhat over the next year or two, you probably wanna go with a slightly spec'd up version. At least get the 16 gigabytes of memory, if not also a 512 gig SSD. I think those will make big improvements on the performance over time. Again, especially if you're gonna have this for multiple years. Enabling file disencryption, we'll set up Touch ID, and we'll set up Apple Pay later. And there we go. This is the 15 inch MacBook Air with everything migrated. And I think this 15 inch display is going to work for a lot of people. I think it's going to be a nice upgrade from the 13 inch if Say your eyesight isn't as great as it used to be. You need a larger display so you can make the icons and the text and everything a little bit bigger without losing that much space. Or if you're running a lot of Windows and applications at the same time and you just need that extra space. And if you're curious what I mean about extra space, let me show you. So on the right, I have the 13 inch M2 MacBook Air. And as you can see, the display is obviously larger. And I have the Safari window max size on both of these windows. And you can see that this window goes down a bit further. So you get more on the screen without losing anything, right? I mean, these MacBooks are about the same size. You can just fit more of the web page on the display at one time. And here's another example. I like to use the verge.com. Look how much more you can get on this display. So right now we see four stories on the right-hand side versus three over here. We get the whole Verge logo over here versus a very much cut off version over here. So you just do have more room to fit more things. Now, before I wrap this up, I do wanna try out the speakers and I do wanna check out Geekbench really fast just to kind of see what that looks like and compare it against the 13 inch version. This is an interesting song I like to use just because it's got a lot of variation. It's got some bass, it's got some very high notes. It's kind of a rock song, so let's see how that sounds. Okay, well, I mean, first impression of the speakers is that they are louder than the 13 inch. Again, we do have six speakers in this versus four in the 13 inch model. So we do get those force canceling subwoofers on each side and a tweeter on each side. And it still sounds muffled. It sounds pretty flat overall. Like you can hear, obviously there's high notes and low notes, but there's not a lot of range in that. And I have to imagine it's because the speakers are just locked inside. There's no speaker grill on the front to just let that sound out. So, but for a 15 inch MacBook Air starting at 1299, you just can't expect 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro level audio coming out of it. You're gonna have no problem hearing your music, hearing your videos, hearing your movies, whatever you're doing on this computer. It's just, it's okay. So here's our Geekbench scores. We get 2607 for single core and 9,812 for multi-core score. And those numbers line up pretty well with the regular M2 MacBook Air. Uh, the multi-core came out a little bit lower in this test, but tests fluctuate all the time depending on what the computer is doing in the background. So brand new computer might be running more processes in the background as it indexes and whatnot. And now we're gonna do a graphics test using GFX Bench. We're going to select just the Aztec 4K off screen and we'll see what that looks like. So the GFX Bench test shows 47.8 frames per second on this test. And comparing against the results of the other M2 MacBooks I've had, the regular M2 with eight GPU cores got a 39. So this one has 10 GPU cores, so it scored a bit higher. Still quite a bit below the M2 Pro and the M2 Max. So overall, this M2 MacBook Air looks like a nice, solid computer for, you know, just about everybody. You no longer need to spend $2,500 to get a large screen Mac laptop. You can now spend starting at $12.99 and I'm sure there's already discounts on Amazon. Check the link below. I know one was already out for saving $50. So if you're looking to pick one up, go ahead and check that link below. Other than that, I will be comparing this laptop versus the 13 inch version. I will compare it against the 14 inch MacBook Pro. I wanna see what all the differences are, but I am curious what you guys think about this laptop. And if you're thinking about picking one up, what color are you gonna get? Let me know below. And if you're interested in my full thoughts about why I think you should probably skip the base model of this, check out the video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.